Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Bud Churchward, WB7FHC. And today in this video, I hope we're going to do something kind of special. I got a package in the mail and we're going to open it up. But what this is all about is the issue that we all have right now about locating Raspberry Pi computers. They are scarce and if you can find them, they're pretty expensive. But is there an alternative out there? Maybe another computer? How about one that's $29? We're going to take a look at it today. We're going to unbox this package right here, see what this Quadra Pro computer looks like, and then we're going to jump over to a great discussion that was held last week at the Mount Baker Amateur Radio Club's Digital Club meeting when uh, this whole computer was discussed. Will this little computer replace the Raspberry Pi for our digital modes and our Nexus boards? Can we run FL Digi with it? Can we run uh, FT8? What can we do with a $29 computer? Okay, let's, um, let's get into this guy. See what we can find. It from Portland, Oregon, not too far away. Always get stuck somewhere here. Let's get this last piece open. And let's see what we can find. I actually ordered two of these. And these are the extra parts that I ordered. Um, I'm assuming that the, the $29 board is um is what's basically in this package here and then for ten dollars more you get this usb hub and a, a little dongle here so we'll just set these aside because it's just a duplicate of what's here and let's get into this package it's well wrapped Glued together, can I pull it apart? Well, we're gonna cut it apart. Alright then, let's see what's inside. Well, we've got uh, HDMI cable, that's handy. Oh, here's a card. Oh, it's a little oh it has a password, a default password on it. That's good. Oh, look at there. That's the computer. Huh. Just about the size of a grilled cheese sandwich. Okay, we've got a USB port right here. Oh, HDMI there. Um, RJ45 for Ethernet. Another USB port. And a little power. Here they are labeled from their website. It even has an SD card slot. Yeah, here's a little wall wart. Huh, five volts. This computer is going to run on five volts. Huh, here it is. Well, let's jump over to the video that I recorded during our meeting uh, last week where uh, this is the topic of discussion. See you there. I uh, posted a note the other day about a uh, $29 computer that's a little bit bigger than a Raspberry Pi uh, that's available from a company in Oregon, and Galen is holding it up. We received them on the same day today, and uh, I managed to get mine going. Uh, but as you can see, it's pretty small, and it's basically an Android, or originally, was built to be an Android uh, set-top box. So it has an Ethernet port, an HDMI port, a USB 2 port, and a USB 3 port, uh, and a micro SD slot in it. It has uh, EMC, EMMC memory inside, 16 gigabytes memory. So there's no micro SD card needed. Okay, it's already. Tell us what is EMMC, what is 
it, it is a it's kind of a flash storage um, medium, I guess you'd call it. It's it's a it's a chip that's actually on the uh, motherboard of this computer, rather than it be, it's not removable. In other words, mm -hmm. okay. So the operating system is on that uh, in that memory, that EMMC memory. And uh, Galen's holding up a power supply. It's a wall wart power supply. It operates on five volts, two amps. It looks like he bought the, the uh, paid an additional $10 and also got a USB hub and a um, USB uh, Bluetooth slash 802.11 AC Wi-Fi dongle that plugs into one of the uh, ports. So that the, the unit itself has a built-in 802.11 BG radio, which only operates on 2.4 gigahertz. Um, that little dongle uh, gives it another Wi-Fi interface that can operate on both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and gives the device Bluetooth capability, which it doesn't have built in. Um, plus you get a USB hub. For an additional $10, that's a pretty good deal uh, for that. Um, I, somebody posted a note after I did that said that um, people are, some people are using this for, for ham radio applications and there, it, it does generate some noise or specifically the wall wart that comes with the unit generates noise. I haven't tested it enough to know whether or not that's the case, but you also get an HDMI cable. Right. You also get an HDMI cable. Um, but in any case, I, uh, the uh, Dave Reese, W1HKJ, who's the developer of, of uh, the FL Digi Suite, posted some very nice instructions. Uh, he just got one as well on, on how to uh, install the FL Digi Suite on this radio, which he did. And, um, so I just followed his instructions. And uh, in addition, I installed the VNC server on it. It's very easy to do. Um, one thing that you should know is that this is not, this does not run the Raspbian operating system. Okay, it runs the Armbian uh, operating system. So you can't, uh, I, I, should, I shouldn't say you can't put Raspbian on it. I'm not sure what would happen if you put Raspbian on it, but <laughs> they are both derived from the bullseye Debian um, kernel. So, uh, you know, they're, they're very similar. The desktop interface is a little bit different. And I will uh, share my screen here. All right, so this is the, the uh, what's it's, it's called the Quadra. And it's from a company called Innovato, I-N-O-V-A-T-O. And what they did is they went to China and they um, bought a whole bunch of these or what were originally Android set-top boxes that run an ARM uh, uh, rock chip CPU. It's about the same horsepower as a Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, like I said, it has 16 gigabytes of memory on board, and it has two gigabytes of RAM. Um, and the way I, so what I'm running right now is FL Digi, and you can see the waterfall is kind of uh, a little bit jerky, right? It's not smooth like you normally see in a Raspberry Pi. Now, I'm in looking at the CPU uh, for this guy. This thing is, has four cores like the Raspberry Pi, and it doesn't seem to be overtaxing the CPU. So I think maybe this is just an artifact of the VNC server. It's not necessarily that this, this waterfall is, is, uh, is behaving this way in FL Digi. Um, but these applications seem to work fine. It takes a little while for them to, to appear on the screen. And again, I'm not sure if that's the, uh, the computer itself or it's, a, it's an artifact of, uh, of the VNC server that it's running. I have to hook it back up to a monitor to, to verify this. So I, did, 
uh, the first thing I did was um, install a VNC server on it so I wouldn't have to, uh, so I could VNC into it from my, my big computer where, where I have large monitors. But in any case, um, it seems to work okay. Uh, I'll have, I'll report more on it as the more testing I do. But um, one thing I was, uh, was telling Andy about, uh, at one of the past meetings, we talked about a, um, uh, the system that we're going to be putting up at Lookout. And we, there's actually two Raspberry Pis that are going to go up there. One of them is the regular Nexus uh, device. And the second Raspberry Pi is connected to a USB relay board which we're going to use uh, via a web interface to um, remotely power on and off devices as needed. And uh, this little computer, this $29 computer, would be an ideal computer for that purpose, for connecting to that USB relay module and installing the, um, the web software on it and remotely controlling it that way. So uh, certainly less expensive. Uh, than a Raspberry Pi. I think it's less expensive than the old price of a Raspberry Pi 3, in fact. I don't I, I lost track of what the prices are now because well, I'm looking at $29.95 right now on my screen with the link that uh, uh, Rob put out. What's, what's the, the GPIO? Is it, how are you keying your transmitter and whatnot? There is no GPIO. Okay, so it's a, that's a very good point. You, you cannot connect a Nexus board to this. You can't trigger any kind of um, pins for a, a rig control on this. So uh, what, what I'm using here is I have this connected to an ICOM 7100, which provides a uh, USB interface that carries the audio because there's a built-in sound card on the 7100. Okay, yeah. And, it, yeah, and I'm using FL rig to uh, trigger uh, push to talk. So there's a USB cable that handles both the audio and the rig control. That's correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. So this, again, this would be a, a, a good choice for those of you who don't, you know, who have a radio that have a built-in um, audio card. Uh, I think in almost all cases, the ones that do break that out via USB. Uh, but if you have a rig that has um, a mini DIN 6 on it, like a lot of us do, you could also connect a signal link to this Quadra, if any of you still have a signal link. And then, because uh, that provides a USB interface, and then Vox control to the uh, signal link, and then it's, uh, uh, you know, closes a relay contact uh, to the radio via the mini DIN 6. Yeah. Well, that's interesting, and, and I think if anybody wanted to fool around, and I, I'm inclined to give it a try with Craig, KM6LYW, has um, a whole suite of software out. He's been using the same sound card we use um, for his DigiLink, I think he calls it, uh, a DigiPi is what he calls it, but his is uh, basically a web server, and you use any device in your house that can access the web page that's on on board uh, and you can control all the apps that we're almost all the apps that we're using so mm -hmm. I, I would think that maybe his software package might run on this yeah except that he can't use the fee pie no no what he's doing okay. mostly now what he's doing is he's hooking straight just like you said a USB to the radio Oh, okay. Yeah, and that using the sound card in the radio. Yeah, and I think he's been using the Pi, uh, the 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 half size Pi. Yeah, the Pi it. Zero. Pi Zero. Is that right? He's been using Pi Zero. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this would be a step up from the Pi Zero, definitely. Yeah, it'd be worth trying. Yeah. yeah. There's an add to cart button right in front of me. I might just have to push it. Right. There was two so, two options. I might go back and look. What was the other one? The there's twenty nine ninety five and thirty nine ninety five. Can and, can I dump your screen? Sure. Uh, if I or you can let me. I'll stop share. Bud, 
Yeah. And what I got was the $39 one. Okay. Let's, I, that's let's, the extra stuff that you get. The the um, USB hub and then power is, supply and all the other stuff. This is the link that Rob put in the chat room. <clears throat> okay. So what's the do little dongle here? And Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier. It has, the unit itself has a built-in 2.4 gigabit uh, Wi-Fi interface. What yeah. that little dongle provides is a 2.4 slash 5 gigahertz radio interface and Bluetooth. Uh -huh. okay. So this, the unit itself ha does not have Bluetooth. So that's what that dongle gives you. And then uh, you also get a, that USB 3 hub uh, there. And, um, and just, you know, those, those two things are more than $10 anyway. You know, for the for us for us to buy them separately, because it's a fairly decent uh, Wi-Fi dongle, the USB dongle there. And, and Craig just came out today with a video of uh, he he was actually out of California, he was up in Newport, Oregon, demonstrating how to use Bluetooth on his Android phone to talk to a radio uh, uh, Kenwood radio that had APRS and he was able to send messages and stuff like that using Bluetooth um, mm -hmm. so there's some some possibilities here yeah yeah and it seems it seems to work fairly well I I I, I did a couple of SQ FSQ things on it is all I've done so far but it, it seems to work all right so any questions on that? I have a question. Yep. Is there any reason you couldn't use uh, like a Sabrent uh, sound card? No, that attaches via USB, correct? Yeah. Yeah. No, that would work fine. That's what I'm using for my uh, HF radio when I got onto it. <clears throat> what, FD8? Right. Yeah, you still have the, do you use a, a, some kind of a serial connection to it for cat control and push to talk? Yeah, I have a, a programming cable that comes with it. And so it's basically the same. I just use uh, that little external sound card and the cables for the phone and the mic. Yeah, you know, it shouldn't be any problem at all. In fact, when I plugged in my ICOM a 7100 USB cable into this computer, this little computer, it immediately recognized it uh, as, I, as I expected it would because it's Debian Bullseye. So it's the same kernel that the, the latest Raspbian uses. It's very, it was quite easy to set up. Um, I also installed FL Digi and Hamlib using packages that I had built for the Nexus DRX and they installed fine and worked much to my surprise. I didn't have to do any modifications or, or anything to them. So I added the DRX repository uh, to the uh, apt APT configuration on this Quadra and installed those applications and it was, yeah, it worked great. Steve, is there any performance benefit of using one of those hacked up USB sound cards that taps into the GPIO or the IO on the sound, do, sorry, sound dongles uh, versus a um, signal link USB? Does the push, does the hardware push to talk work any better than the Fox? Mm, I, I, as a practical matter, I don't think it does. But you know, if you think about it, uh, it, it was there's certainly less in the path to actually trigger push to talk if you can actually use a contact closure. Yeah, that's what, um, I, that, that's what I've always thought. I Fox yeah. was always fraught with peril as far as I was concerned. Yeah, um, I, you know, a, a lot of people use signal links and, and uh, they're deployed in many MCOM environments and they seem to work fine. Uh, they don't work if you want to pass, um, use the higher speed modems, the 9600 modems. That, that's, uh, that, that's 
slightly qualified, uh, the same guy who makes the high performance um, audio interfaces, Masters Communications, has a replacement board for a signal link that basically completely fixes that issue. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Wow. <laughs> it's hilarious. <Okay. laughs> All right. So, you know, the signal link, the signal link is still a player. Definitely. No. Well, I haven't actually thrown them away, but I've been tempted. Okay. Oh, and one one last note is that the Quadra, the Armbian operating system that is installed on the Quadra is a 64-bit operating system, unlike the Raspbian that I've been recommending for the Nexus. And, uh, you know, the same caveats apply. There are some ham radio applications that simply don't work on 64-bit operating systems, and I'm assuming they won't work on the Quadra either because they don't work on the on the Raspberry Pi. So, but FL Digi, Direwolf, you know the the big players, WSJTX. Uh, I would expect all of those guys to work. Um, the uh, Lin BPQ. Um, and uh, Pi RDOPC, probably not. Uh, he, has, he hasn't built 64-bit uh, versions of those, and, and it doesn't, the source code he provides doesn't work, or I can't get it to work under a 64-bit operating system. So, uh, but, but the big, the major programs probably would work okay on this. Has anybody pulled a case off of that thing to look inside? Is there maybe a way to get at some GPIO? Uh, as I understand it, the board that they have does not have any kind of GPIO capability in it. Uh, it it just wasn't called for for these TV set top boxes. Oh, so okay. you know, to, to shave a few bucks off, they didn't they didn't implement anything like that. Now Galen has purchased a slightly higher powered, with more memory. Uh, raw set dot box basically doesn't have any operating system on it or probably has um, uh, Android on it if anything and he's going to try to get I'm assuming load Armbian on on it and I don't know if that one has uh, GPIO pins Galen I, I'm guessing probably not um, not from what I see it looks pretty much like like this does I mean it's you know, it's a box in a plastic case, mm -hmm. and for, I don't believe there are any other. Uh, I haven't seen any mention of GPIO and stuff like that. Okay. All right, and oh, and so a word of caution: this none of my scripts for the uh, Nexus DRX are going to work out of the box on Quadra. You know, the usernames are different and, and the locations of certain files are different. So, you know, if you're if you're going to get this box and run FL Digi on it, I recommend that you build it from source. And so if you if you're not comfortable doing that, you don't know your way around Linux very well, this could be a pretty daunting project uh, to, you know, put the same apps on this Quadra as, as you're running on the Nexus DRX, just a, a word of warning. So it's just, you know, how close to the bleeding edge do you want to be? Right, right. We'll, get, we'll give it a few months and see what happens. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, in the, in the chatting about this, does this look like it's a sustainable thing? Or is this was like a one shot purchase of a discontinued product uh, well it i guess it depends on on how many people buy it um this company they're based in portland and and they seem to be really enthusiastic and they seem to be selling a lot of units or as they, many as they can get their hands on i should right. say they're, they're asking still a people, supply chain they're asking people to dial back on the orders <laughs> dial back to six yeah. <laughs> my gosh Right. You know, I'm sure they're having the same supply chain problems that everybody else is, too. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but these are definitely available if you only want one or two. They are available, and I got mine in uh, two days. So. And there are 
they're uh, only uh, selling them in the U.S. right now. Yes, they're only shipping to the U.S., correct. Yep. Okay. I believe a few folks in the U.K. are complaining about that already. I'm yeah. sure they are, yeah. I always sneak them over there to them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did want to add, if, if you're really in need of GPIO, uh, they do have breakout boards that you can get if if you know how to solder and stuff like well i think some of them are even pre-built but um i just put a link to one of them um but uh if you really need gpio hey you can hack your way into getting it <laughs> yeah they, they yeah the board that that rob is talking about is a is a board that provides gpio pins and they're uh there's some electronics in there and it has a single USB connection to the computer. Yep. There's some special software that you run on the computer that you can allow you to access GPIO pins on this breakout board. Yep. How much is it, Rob? Uh, this one is uh, 15 bucks. Okay. Uh, you could probably go straight to Adafruit and it's probably, well, probably 15, but no, <laughs> uh, probably about 12. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, I knew these were out there. I just never really, I don't have any, uh, yeah. but uh, one that I was looking at uh, had a lot more GPIO pins, but that thing was like 60 bucks or something like that. Uh, that was a while back. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, if you're in dire need of GPIO uh, pins and all you have is USB, you can, you can do it this way. Uh, but again, remember, there's software that has to be installed and configured yep. on their on your computer in order to use those. So Python's great for that. Yeah, I'd imagine that's, that's right. the same for like an RS two thirty two USB converter as well. You'd have to have this the necessary drivers in that. Then no, no, uh, no. You, that'll recognize if you have a USB to serial converter, that'll recognize it right out of the bat, right off the bat. You yeah, don't need to put any special Linux. drivers. Yeah, that's part of Linux, correct. I plugged Good in a know. couple, yeah, I plugged in a couple of um, USB to RS-232 converters that I had from different manufacturers and it instantly recognized both of them and assigned them to uh, serial port interfaces in the operating system, so, yep. Well, I hope you found that interesting. I know I did. The Innovento Quadra pretty interesting little device. It'll be fun to see what kinds of things we can do with this and amateur radio. That's just one section from our September uh, Mount Baker Amateur Radio Club's digital group meeting. You, you might be interested in some of the other topics that we covered. Um, if it's not there already, you can look soon on my YouTube channel for the entire meeting. Thank you for watching.